With skin cancer, size matters, and we use it to determine how we're going to close our defect. There's a few basic assessments we need to make, and I'm gonna take you through them. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is determine the extent of the problem. So get your skin marker, and my preferred technique is to just place simple dots around the problem. That includes the main lesion, the skin cancer. So we're gonna say that this blue dot here, the blue suture is the, the skin cancer and any unstable skin surrounding it. So it typically will be flaky skin that doesn't come off when you give it a clean wipe with a sterile cloth erythematous skin or skin that looks excoriated and scratched. It's unstable under the microscope may contain cancerous tissue or precancerous tissue. So mark all of it. So in this case, I've got the main skin cancer, the skin lesion, which is blue, and then this inflamed erythematous skin. I'm going to put little dots. So it's not heavy print. It's not heavy pushing. It's just little dots to mark the extent. This is typically circular-ish. Not quite circular, it's not uniform, but it's circular-ish. And it's just little fine dots around the problems. I've got unstable skin, I've got a few holes right there. So it's circular-ish. The next step in deciding your markup is what is your intention? Are you doing a diagnostic biopsy or are you doing a therapeutic biopsy? Diagnostic is just to get more information, to get establish a diagnosis. And if it comes back as a skin cancer, the patient requires more treatment. That's either gonna to be topical therapy, medical therapy such as radiotherapy, or surgical excision with wider margins. If it's diagnostic, we're gonna do a one to two millimeter margin so you get your ruler and you're going to do one or two millimeters. I typically do two. And the way I do that would be mark slightly heavier. I mark my positions at 12, six, nine, and three. And then if it's asymmetrical, I'll do somewhere in between where it might be slightly narrower, so it becomes circular-ish. But it's not a perfect circle because the original markup wasn't a perfect circle. And then I'll just do dashed lines, so slightly longer lines, to join up the area. And this is before you put your local anaesthetic in. In this current series we're doing, we're talking, we've talked about how to do an excision, how to perform a skin graft, how to decide which reconstruction you need. This session is about measuring up. If you want to catch up on those videos, it's in the members only area for subscription only. So head to that area and you can see the videos there. And this will go there afterwards as well. So we've added our two millimeter margin, which is for diagnosis. Oftentimes people are unsure as to the direction to close the wound and how to orientate it. So here are my top tips. On the face, just keep it as a circle. You often find that it will close as a straight line, even as even though you excise it as a circle. That's because the muscles in the face overlap and they pull in different directions. So often you can cheat in the edges without having any standing cones or dog ears. On the limbs, you wanna close them axially. That means, this is my arm, axial would be along the axis of the limb, so in straight lines. Why is that? The reason is, if we have a look, the laxity of the limb is circumferential, less so horizontally. So by closing vertically, you will draw on that circumferential laxity to facilitate closure compared to the lack of horizontal. The second thing is your structures Neurovascular structures, tendons, 
lymphatics, which will help manage edema, run longitudinally. If you, if you excise your lesion and then any excess standing cone, you take it from a vertical direction, you will preserve more structures that are running longitudinally. If you start excising horizontally, you're more likely to disrupt more lymphatics, you get more edema, and you also don't get to draw on that circumferential laxity that's helped you close the wound. To avoid injury to structures as well, you want to be in a vertical orientation. And then finally, reconstructions work very well when you reconstruct a longitudinal defect. Also then when horizontal, but sometimes you don't have the choice. So on the face, circular. On the limbs, so arms and legs, vertical. And then when you're doing it on the trunk, you want to re rely on what's called your relaxed skin tension lines. So when you push the skin together, where does the natural creases arise? You want to orientate your scars within those on the trunk and abdomen. Tend to be oblique on the back if you're on the sides, horizontal on the abdomen. Can be a bit oblique or transverse on the chest and vertical in the midline. So that's how you orientate your scars. If I'm doing, so this is a diagnostic biopsy and this is in the, this is using a two millimeter margin. If I'm doing a therapeutic margin, it depends on what I'm treating. If it's a BCC, it might be a four or five millimeter margin. If it's an SCC, it might be a four, six or 10 millimeter margin, depending on the aggressiveness of the skin cancer. And that's determined by many factors. In the UK, we use the British Association of Dermatology Guidelines to guide our margin of excision. So if I was doing four millimeter, it's from the edge of my abnormal skin, not just the central problem, but the unstable skin. So four millimeters is about there. And then you join that up. Often people will focus on the peripheral excision, but you also have to be aware of the depth of your excision. If it's a diagnostic biopsy, it's with a cuff of fat. If it's a therapeutic biopsy, so you're diagnosing it and treating it in the same sitting, that really depends on your guidelines. So for BCC, it's still with a cuff of fat. If you see any involved underlying fascia, you take that as well, maybe as a second specimen. SCC is always down to the next fascial plane. Melanoma, diagnosis first. Always a two millimeter margin for anything pigmented. That's really, really crucial for melanoma. That's really, really crucial that you do that. You take a diagnostic biopsy first, two millimeter margin, excise it all, get the Breslow thickness, and then you come back to a wide excision depending on that Breslow thickness, either one centimeter or two centimeters down to the next fascial plane because all the lymphatics are above that and that's how it spreads. And then you do your excision. So let's do this again. One of my top tips for excision is this. If you're doing an excision that's got different heights, so top there, bottom there, start at the bottom so that the blood trickles down and doesn't get in your field. So once you've made that incision, incision, the blood will trickle down, but you'll still be able to see on top. If you make the incision at the top first, the blood will trickle down and get in your way. So counter traction, hands out of the way, make that inferior incision first, counter traction, use the belly of the blade. Notice how I'm not using the point. I'm using the belly to get to the depth I want. See where you are, and then also do the top. It's really important that you stay within your inked lines. And then get to the depth where you want. So you're using your little finger to give yourself exposure, and then sweep. Match the depth all the way. And then you sweep. 
so we just take it with a cuff of fat because it's a excision biopsy, it's a diagnostic biopsy. So really, this hand is doing a lot of work. It's pulling up, this hand is, this little finger is pulling down, and I'm just sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. You want to get to the same depth everywhere. From top to bottom. And before you take it off completely, you want to put a marker stitch in the same place you normally put it. So I tend to put my marker stitch 12 o'clock superior or on the limb 12 o'clock proximal at the highest point. And I do it in the same place everywhere so that if I happen to forget to put it on the specimen and the, the lab asks, I know where to put it. I know where I normally put it. And that's that. Now you may be asking yourself, why have I got a hole underneath? Because I've done an excision on the other side before. So, put your marker stitch in the same place everywhere. So this was all about excision, markup, and how you're going to use that to decide what you're going to do. Once you've marked your defect, once you've marked the extent of your defect, you put your local anaesthetic in, that makes things swell you will know whether you'll be able to close it primarily or whether you need to take a skin graft or do a local flap. If this is a diagnostic specimen and you can't close it directly, but you know the patient's gonna to have to come back for therapeutic surgery, you can always just put a dressing on it, leave the defect and do the reconstruction and plan the reconstruction once you have done the therapeutic excision as guided by your diagnostic sample. If you want to catch up on the reconstructive options, such as local flaps, skin grafts, skin graft dressings, the technique for excision, check out the members only videos.